okay, uh, sorry for the shaky video, but when you're doing this crap, make sure you don't use a cord like this. Um, this cord does not have a ground on it. It is going to kill you doing this crap. Um, I guess I just made the observation just a minute ago that that prong was broken off of there. Um, we're cutting a tank with an electrical device, and the tank has water in it. And uh, the last thing you want to do is wind up dead over this deal. Who cares about the propane? The electric part will kill you too. So um, be careful with that. So what I did, I went straight out got me another cord. So this one here has a ground on it and stuff. And you want to make sure that when you're doing this stuff, I hope you can see it, but that is a GFI. That's a, that's a GF, a ground fault receptacle. And uh, we're going to make sure that we're protected by ground fault in case the water, you know, in case we get this power tool wet, you know, that way we don't get killed. So be careful. Keep your cords away from the water. Keep it up off the ground. Stuff like that. You know, be careful. All right, we're going to cut this the firebox notch out of this tank. Um, I've already done that one over there. Uh, got it all cut open and everything, but I figure I'll show you how. Um, I've already got, there's water in this tank right now. It took a long time, but it filled up. It took about 30 minutes, 45 minutes for this thing to fill up. You can see the water in there still. Um, I didn't do the soap routine. Normally I put soap and stuff in there, but, uh, you know, this tank's going to be sitting for a while, so it's going to air out, you know, after it sits. But anyway, um, so this is a trade secret here. This is how I not mark my, this is Ox 30 inch diameter tank. So I already know what my firebox notch is, so I'm just going to mark that on here. A lot of times, this, the weld seam right here is pretty close to where I usually make my notch depth. So that'll kind of give you an inkling where to get started, but uh, just so happens mine's on that side of the, of the well. So I make that mark, and while I'm here, I've already got this one. I know where the top of the tank is. So I'm going to mark it while I'm at it. Right here. Here's the first so, two marks. I've got this handy dandy level here. What I do on this for this horizontal cut, see on this one here, I'm just going to follow that, wet, that weld seam because it's already straight. But on this here, we don't care what, as far as how this is oriented in the tank, I want these bungs on the bottom of my smoker, just because I don't want to have to make those perfect to fill in those holes in. So I'm just going to go level from this mark right here. And I'm just going to make a mark, just like that. You can leave yourself a little bit of room one way or the other if you want, it ain't going to hurt nothing. You're going to clean this hole up later anyway. So then what I'm going to do is just follow that on across the rest of the way until I get around. And this will be really, really close to what I'm at for my firebox. And I'm going to stop short of going straight ahead because this tank's not level that way. making this level level there. And that's how I'm finding my spot the next to next. Then what I do is I if you look at the bubble on this level, if you look at the bubble on this level right here, you'll see the tank's not totally level. It's just a little on that side of the of the line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this level, I'm gonna guess approximately that same amount of, of bubble going over the edge. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. There. And that'll get us pretty close. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use a grinder wheel to at least get this tank started because most of you guys don't have one of those uh, Milwaukee circular saws there that you cut metal with. So four and a half inch disc on a grinder. Come here, let me show you something. Got to be careful. That wheel's busted right there. So I've got to change wheels now. But anyway, 
I, I guess I must have set it down or something. One big no-no is I'm using this grinder without the without the guard that goes there. And the problem with that is, is if you get lazy about your fingers, you'll get your finger up in there. Or if this wheel did bust, this thing's going to shatter and go everywhere. It could get in your face and, you, you know, whatever. So you always want to make sure you got your, your, your helmet on, you know, some gloves, your welding jacket, long jeans and stuff. And then you need to have your guard on there. But I'm crazy. You know, I don't use it usually, so... Um, but that's bad, so don't do that. I'm going to a new wheel. Way. It's not going to blow, blow up on me. Uh, one more thing. Whenever you're cutting, this thing's full of water. And we don't want water getting in our grinder. Or, so you don't want to die electrocution, you know. So um, keep your cords and stuff up off the ground. You know, so like this, I've got it leaning up on top here. That way it's not sitting in a water puddle. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this grinder wheel, and I'm going to make several little cuts all the way along this line down here on the bottom and the tank's going to start, grind, start draining out. So you'll know when, when you're cutting through this tank, you'll know water's coming out whenever you see the sparks stop. So uh, just kind of be watching that here. I'm going to make a couple of cuts. It's probably going to be kind of loud on your screen. And then, you know, you got to keep the motor part of your grinder up because water's going to tend to go down and out and run along this wheel. If you hold this grinder like this, water's going to get down in the motor and you're going to get killed. So you got to be careful. Just if you're scared, don't do it. So if you notice there, the sparks almost completely stopped. And now water's coming out. So I'm going to make five or six cuts across here, and that's going to make it come out a lot faster. We're going to let this drain now for just a little bit. Keep mind, keep your electric cords out of the water. Okay, uh, the water stopped draining out, so now uh, I'm going to finish making my cuts and stuff. But now since the since the water went out, it sucked air in with you know with it as the water went out. So now we got oxygen in here. And this is a little overkill probably, but I just seem to be safe. So what I did is I got nitrogen bottles and stuff laying around here because we're in the refrigeration business too. So um, I've got a bottle of nitrogen hooked up. You can use CO2 or welding gas like argon, you know, CO2 argon mix or whatever. Some inert gas that's not flammable, a non-flammable one. And all I did is I just got this just trickling. You can hear it just barely trickling in there. And uh, so what it's doing is it's pushing the oxygen out because it's lighter than the nitrogen is. So anyway, so I'm going to finish cutting. Like I said, make sure to keep your cords, because there's water on the ground now, keep your cords out of the water, keep your motor up on your grinder, make sure you get all your safety gear on. And he has it upside down. Huh? I said you had it upside down. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Here we go. All done. Kind of stinky. Don't.
getting all this? All of it. All of it. Oh, the float.